On 16th of January 2024, a paper showed up titled The Persistent Shadow of the Supermassive Black Hole of M87 by the Event Horizon Telescope, the same team that brought us the first ever picture of the black hole, M87 star. This team had now produced this result. This shows a black hole observation a year apart taken in 2018. Now if you're someone like me, you would start to think, why do we have another image of a black hole taken a year apart? What does that mean and why it's special? Well, to answer your questions, we have Ruhan Dahale, a PhD candidate and a EHT researcher who is responsible for leading one of the imaging algorithms responsible for producing this result. So without a further ado, let us now dive deep into the heart of the M87 galaxy, 54 million light years away, and zoom in at its center to uncover what the supermassive black hole, almost a billion times heavier than the mass of our sun, has got to tell us. Einstein's general theory of relativity predicts that the size of the black hole is more or less proportional to its mass. And in fact, the formula given by Rs, which is the Schwarzschild radius of the black hole, as you can see, clearly shows that it has a direct proportionality with mass. Since M87, like black hole in the center of a galaxy, which has mm -hmm. matter around the black hole and, and the rate at which the matter is going inside this black hole is kind of low. So what that means that if you observe the black hole throughout a few several years to decades, you will see that its average size remains the same. If we actually see that the, the size of M87 has increased more than we expected, then, then there's something wrong with general relativity. So we need to test that. Yeah. And that's one of the tests that we want to do. So that's exactly what we did. We, we saw the black hole after one uh, one year. And what mm -hmm. do we see? Exactly what, what GR predicts. We, we saw that it's the same size as it was last year. Other right. reasons could be like we can also study something that we observe from this image is that you saw the, the bright region of the ring. Uh, if you if, if people remember, it was at the south part. But now right. it has shifted. So what can we study from this? So by how much it has shifted. So like we, we have different theories and, and models of how matter is going around black holes. Mm -hmm. And if you know uh, uh, exactly, like we can also predict how much it will it will move this matter uh, after a year or after two years. And mm -hmm. from from how much we observe that it, it has moved, we can actually constrain our, our theoretical models to understand black holes much better. So the ultimate goal for any kind of study is to match our theoretical models with the actual observations so that we can make more powerful predictions. So the reason we would want to observe again and, and do this, like make this more result important is that we want to improve our error bars and, and make like more precise measurements of what we have done before. To give you all a bit of a context, the relative distances from Earth to both the black holes make them appear the same size in the sky. However, the black hole M87 star is a thousand times massive from Sag A star. The gravitational pull of these black holes are so strong that it takes gas days to weeks to orbit the larger M87 star. Whereas for the smaller Sag A star, it can complete an orbit in mere minutes. This means that the gas is almost traveling close to the speed of light. Uh, uh, EHT actually took observations not just in 2017 and 2018 that we have released. We have observations taken uh, in 2021, 2022, mm -hmm. 2023, and we are going to take observations again in a few weeks now in 2024. Uh, so we actually did this for both M87 and Sag A, which are the primary targets oh. for black holes. Uh, and and people saw the first image of Sagittarius star in in 2022, and yeah, it was a bit deformed. And as you said, it's it's a more dynamic in in nature, so it's it's more mm -hmm. difficult to to actually work with Sagittarius star. It's it's like it's moving. There is scattering that we experience in the galaxy that, and so the making an image right. or or study Sagittarius is more difficult. We do have observations from Sagittarius. Uh, from all these years, uh, from 2018 to, to 2023, and we we are working on that. So instead of now releasing just like one observation at a time, we decided to just like do one paper, and then like do a more mm. comparative study of all the observations that we have. I think that will come out anytime next year, hopefully. Since it's like more dynamic, I think it makes mm -hmm. more sense to, to like make a a video movie. Yeah, for, 
a movie yeah. out of it yeah that's the that's so, that's also so, the rumor that i heard so i just wanted to uh, kind of confirm okay that's that's so, really yeah. exciting this is really cool this literally means that after a certain time we will have an actual black hole movie now what that actually means is they will now combine all of their observations that they have taken throughout these years and stack them up frame by frame making an actual movie this is going to be really cool so after all of this the obvious question now that stands is how do you actually image a black hole and what the heck are all of these imaging models and algorithms that's a very good question like what what how like people should should i think realize that it's not as simple as just taking an image just taking a picture with your phone or, or like exactly just, or an optical image you just like click a button and you just like take take it on your uh, like ccd mm -hmm. um so here it here how it works is that since the the angular size of the sky of black hole is so small we have to like push the limits of a, of of, a, of resolution of the telescope very far and there are there are two ways majorly you can do that you can just like go to a different frequency or wavelength or you can just make your telescope bigger and bigger okay and the way we do this is like we want the telescope as big as the size of earth okay to actually reach that resolution and that's kind of difficult you know it you can't have a telescope that big so what we yeah. do is we kind of make a virtual telescope that represents that so we we what we do is we place different telescopes all over the world which would simulate as if it were that that big i mean sure there are holes in this big telescope but it's still something yeah, yeah. and then we observe with, with all this like right now uh, in 2018 we had like about 8 to 9 stations where like telescopes mm -hmm. were observed and in yeah of course the more telescopes we have the better the, 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 the more data we have so when we take the data we actually are not really making an image right away by taking the data in different telescopes mm -hmm. what were we recording is like all the 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 uh, electromagnetic waves or the voltages at each telescope okay voltages. If you record this it's it's not really in the image uh, domain it's like in in something called fourier domain uh, i think some of the people would would know what that means mathematically but that's like a more mathematical form of the data that we have okay and ideally you should have it sampled over many different spatial frequencies but we we have the data only few points okay because we have okay. very few data. and mm. uh, so since the data is so poorly sampled we have actually we need lots of different algorithms to to actually say okay what we are seeing is exactly what we are seeing so we actually need different methods to do a consistency check uh, because if you only use one method you don't know if it's it's correct we need different methods right. to tell this and uh, so once we we actually record the data okay so first of all the data that we record is it's like in petabytes so we take this to a, a common facility where we take the data from all over the world and then we do correlate so the data correlate really means they just take telescopes from two to data from two different telescopes and just combine it together we do this for all different two telescopes once mm -hmm. the data is correlated we actually have to also go through some other things like the atmosphere will is going to add some corruptions to the data or or the the telescope itself has some corruptions to it to how it works right. so we need to actually calibrate it before we actually can work with it so once we are done with that even for calibration by the way, we don't we don't just use one method we actually use two different methods just to calibrate mm. because we want to be sure uh, because here we are really pushing the limits of astronomy uh um uh, with working with this kind of difficult data so we we want to make sure that we are doing this correct once the data is now calibrated now as i said we need different imaging algorithms that actually take this data which is in a more mathematical form and not an image right. to actually go to an image okay so we need different ways to do it so one is like you just take a direct transformation of the data in the mathematical form in fourier domain and then you go to this image domain not you are just doing an inverse fourier transform of the baselines and then uh Exactly. So you do okay. You take a inverse Fourier transformation. If I have to put in a more jargon way, and then you reach the image. It's a more traditional way. It has been done since many forty, fifty years in terms of okay. uh, radio. We actually had developed our own algorithms back in twenty nineteen paper. So what we okay. do is instead of starting with the data, we just start with an arbitrary or or some prior image that we think can be represented. So okay. that's not related to the data yet. Okay, it's not it's not representing the data yet. So then we now the Fourier transformation. We may we go into the Fourier domain with this mm -hmm. prior image, that we have. and now we write a function that actually compares the observations that we have, the data, 
with the mm-hmm. model image that we are making and then we try okay. to minimize the difference between these two uh, uh, data from the model and the observations until right. we read the 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 best fitting the data image okay and okay. and so use some kind of uh, thirds to go towards the minimization which introduces more physics for example the image should be positive it should not be like negative values of the the, the intensity that we see of black hole okay so the image should be smoother it should not be like spots everywhere okay mm-hmm. so we actually have different kind of uh, uh, um, mathematics yeah to control the physicality of where it goes in the minimization process okay okay and okay. then the third third way of doing uh, this image algorithm is like a more bayesian approach so like using if people who are aware using a bayes theorem people are not aware what we do in bayes theorem is that there is some kind of event that has happened which is observations for us and we want to figure out what is the probability distribution of a model given those observations and uh, yeah that's that's the easiest way to put it so how we do right. this is that we we define the model parameters that we want and then we also give some prior information of how much this like where this model uh, parameters are coming from for example uh, the total uh, intensity of the black hole is somewhere between let's say 0 and 1 that would be some prior right. information that we give model parameters and uh, so i work with this imaging algorithm called comrad and it's mm-hmm. a, a slightly newer imaging algorithm uh, written by paul tida developed by paul tida at harvard so sure. is Uh, uh, amazing in in different ways that we also had other bayesian algorithms in the past and we also used that in the paper called themis but why is mm. comrad a uh, different than themis uh, mm-hmm. first of all this julia programming language is super fast we can get an image in like 2 to 3 hours while themis it takes wow. like days okay and and Very the other thing that you can do is like uh, themis produces just like probability distribution of images but in comrad we can also get probability distribution of the the instrument corruptions that we have okay so mm-hmm. we can also get that from there and mm-hmm. uh, yeah so first we took the well we did this for all the methods uh, we just like had different kinds of data that we generated synthetic not the real ones and we tested our method on this data to validate whether it works once we know okay. knew that it worked then only we went on to the actual data okay so many algorithms and models are being used But the obvious question that should come in your mind is what is the final image that we are seeing? Is it the average of it? Is it the sum of it? Is it everything but combined together? Uh, that's a that's a good question. I mean, we make so many images and so many different algorithms and then we show this right. is one image. And people are always curious, right. okay, how is this just one image? Uh, what we right. do do is that we actually uh, survey over many different millions of parameters. Test mm-hmm. this on synthetic data. and then we choose mm-hmm. the parameters that best work for this data and then apply to the actual data okay oh. now even after that we have about 1000 1000 or 10 100000 it depends on how many parameters actually pass this test there was by number of images now all of these actually images are a good representation of the data so it's not like one is better than the other so we just take oh. one random comet and that would represent this thing this this for this oh, particular it's just one random selection from that final yeah. size of batch of, ta- of images so, okay so for the, for the methods which are not bayesian we do the same thing we just pick one random image from the best representations and then okay. we take that so now we since mm-hmm. we have five methods we actually have got five images now okay correct and now we yeah. just take an average of all the five images and put that as the main result that goes on every day the paper Okay so I really hope you guys enjoyed what you saw here. This particular video took a lot of effort to make so I would really appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button down below. This move really encourages us to put in more work. A disclaimer in the upcoming vi- video we'll actually continue this chat with Rohan and sort of take it further to the next level is what is the future of all of this? Where is the event horizon telescope slowly heading to and what more can we expect from the collaboration in general? As always links to all of the research papers and all of the materials you use will be down in the description. I will also leave my LinkedIn and Rohan's LinkedIn profile down in the description below. Feel free to reach us if you have questions regarding this particular topic and as always stay tuned the new videos coming. I will catch you guys in the next one really soon.